we're going to start by sewing the head and back section to the first side section. So you want to mark up the closest mark point on the front here and that's going to be sewn to the tip here, point A, on the head. So when I used to try patterns um, when I was younger of other people's, I used to just sew away and not really follow the lines on the fabric sections. It's really important to follow the lines that they match up with every stitch as you go. A small back stitch. And it does take some time, but it's worth taking the time and making sure that the lines match up on every stitch to get a nice finish. So going around the top of the head here, you need to manipulate the head gusset section to make sure that it all lines up. And again, make sure that the stitches stay on the lines on both sides. So keep sewing all the way down the back until you get to point B on the gusset section. And then like the last stitch, just make sure that you manipulate it to go the final stitch through there, point B, like that. And finish your sewing um, with your preferred stitch. I just like to do a couple of blanket stitches or over stitches. I just quickly like to say the felt fabric I'm using. So this is actually um, a mixture. So this is 70% wool and 30% acrylic felt fabric. Just gives a nice sort of finish. But this one is 100% wool fabric. So you can use either really. Um, Acrylic felt, plain acrylic felt fabric is okay, but I find, um, yeah, the acrylic felt fabric doesn't have as much durability as the mixed felt or the wool felt fabric. So now we can sew on the other side. So, yeah, I did forget to mention um, right sides together, but that's pretty, pretty telling, I think, from the way I've stitched here. But uh, the body sections are all right sides together, and we're going to turn them out after. And again, we want to sew to this point here, so we're leaving the middle point, and we sew the other side starting point A all the way around to point B. And once again, make sure that you manipulate the felt fabric around the bend. So one thing I find with sewing is to just take your time with it. Um, it's one of those crafts I think you can just sit down in front of the telly with a cup of tea and just, you know, relax and, and create at the same time. So on the second side section, you need to leave a small opening for turning later, around two centimetres. So just finish just below halfway. So a small opening and then we carry on and just sew around the bottom. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this now. You can sew on the tummy section. So line up the mark points. And we want to start sewing here from point A and we're going to sew all the way around back to point A. And if it helps, you can pop in a couple of pins. And using the back stitch, small back stitch, making sure the points line up. When I was designing this little frog, um, there was lots of failed attempts and 
Um, I found it quite tricky to, to come up with something that was easy to sew together that still looked um, frog-like but was basic and that you could hand sew because I don't do sewing machines. But then if you're good with a sewing machine you could always scale up the stencil sheet and um, and create a larger frog using using the sewing machine. Yep, and there we go. So we just finish back where we started and sign off. Now we can turn out our frog. So I like to start at the bottom and get that turned and then work up the back and carefully turn the rest. along the seams carefully just to get that all turned nicely there we go and the tops of the eye area on either side yeah so you should have something that looks like like that a flat frog and use your fingers as well to shape and push the wool into place i mean you can really see he's starting to come together now and stuff a little bit down into that bottom area as well. A bit more down in the bottom area. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this now. So now it's time to ladder stitch the opening closed. Uh, so now what I like to do is just carefully insert the needle oops, um, horizontally and then just across the lip area just carefully pull that forwards a little bit to shape the mouth more so we can cover these stitches um, if you want to just by carefully teasing out some of the fiber across the seams from the felt like this just be careful not to catch any of the stitches and you can use a stiff toothbrush if you've got one just to brush those over a bit more as well okay so now let's sew in the eye so I've tied a knot in the end of my thread and you want to exit where you want the first eye to be and just pull that in through the back of the felt to anchor it on and thread on your first bead and just sew straight through to the other side and if you look from the front as well just to check that that's even and look from above just to make sure and pull through. So you could embroider the eyes on if preferred. I'm going to go through once more just to make sure that's securely attached. Then exit at the back. Just sew a knot of your preference and pull that back in and then you can tease out some of the fibre again to cover any stitches. Let's start making one of the legs so you want to fold the section over wrong sides together starting on the inside bottom edge and I like to start sewing in between to hide the knot so just pull that so that it hides the knot there and then just begin sewing all around and then upside up the um, outside edge you can use a whip stitch or a blanket stitch for this whichever you prefer I'm using a blanket stitch on this one So when you get to the top of your leg section, you want to cut the pipe cleaner to length and bend the tips over and then just pop those down. Then continue sewing around the top to close. So make the other leg and then the arms the same way. 
Okay, let's attach the arms and legs now. So starting with the leg, you want to work out where you want the first one to go, keeping the fold at the front. So a few small whip stitches following the other stitches on top of the leg, just all over the top. and carefully tease out some of the fibre again to cover any noticeable stitches on both the leg and the body, just like that. On the underside, so a few small um, ladder stitches to keep the leg really secure. And you may find it useful to pin that in place to get the, the right position, just so that they line up even. Okay, then just bend the feet up how you want them and attach the arms exactly the same way. And once again, just carefully tease over some of the fibres on the tops of the arms and the tops of the body there just to cover the stitches. I love how each little frog turns out different. I scaled this one on the stencil sheet down a little bit just to make a slightly smaller one. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration of my little Beans the Frog um, doll. And if you want to have a go at making one yourself, then the pattern is available over in my Etsy shop. There's a selection of little outfits that you can make for your frog as well. I'd love to hear your suggestions for other little outfits that I could perhaps have a go at making for Beans the Frog. So feel free to leave suggestions in the comment section below. Yeah.